All right, well, Giselle Shaw is now gone from TNA. She has requested her release, uh, and she is no longer part of the knockouts division, the ever-shrinking knockouts division. Um, that also features a couple, probably about three girls on the website who we haven't even seen in months. Uh, this division just keeps getting smaller and smaller uh, from a fan standpoint. And I'm strictly speaking from the outside looking in. There's been very little effort to grow this division, to prepare for uh, future departures, any departures. And, you know, I think a lot of people saw this one coming. Uh, I, I'm I'm surprised it didn't happen when Scott Demore left. But I had told you guys here on the channel that it did take some, some uh, convincing to get Giselle Shaw to remain with the company. And... They tried to repackage her uh, into a baby face, you know, towards the end here and kind of had her working with Gail Kim. And it all kind of proved to be a waste of our time, all these vignettes and everything they were trying to do because they um, they ended up doing absolutely nothing with her. Uh, perhaps it's because they felt that she wasn't long for the company and that she was going to be, you know, leaving or wanting to leave sooner than later. But they've granted her her release. Uh, she, uh, under the agreement that she worked the Kentucky set of tapings and put someone over on the way out the door, which I found kind of funny because Giselle Shaw usually loses anyway. Um, she wasn't, you know, this, uh, you know, 10 year vet of the company. <laughs> she, she wasn't a champion, never won a title. So, um, I, I, I kind of had to laugh at <laughs> that. They wanted her to put someone over, on the way out, um, if there's been plenty of people they've released out of their company, out of the company that just disappeared, but I'm surprised they just didn't do more with her. And I know there's going to be someone in the comments here. There always is. Well, she's a she's a guy. Uh, regardless of what you what you or how you feel uh, about transgender wrestlers, uh, she competed in the knockouts division uh, because this is fake wrestling. Um, they could have had. Jiv uh, Jay Vidal compete in the knockouts division if they wanted to. You know, you uh, once upon a time, um, uh, Tessa Blanchard competed with the men. Jordan Grace has competed with the men. It's phony wrestling. They do whatever they want to do. Okay. So it's entertainment. Uh, but regardless of your thoughts of Giselle Shaw, she did compete in the knockouts division. And uh, that's that. So, you know, you can kind of. Keep those thoughts to yourself. But she did compete in the division. I expected her at one point to be the champion. I was even saying recently that I felt that they were going to build her up to beat Jordan Grace uh, at Bound for Glory. Um, I've since retracted that because they've been using her so little. Jordan's been beating this open challenge to death, which likely means that's what she's going to do at Bound for Glory and probably lose at that point. I am surprised that she was never champion. She was never a knockouts tag team champion. You know, they could have put the in this division that just screams that we need tag teams. They never really did anything with her and um what the hell's her name? Savannah Evans. You know, I, I surprised they never won the belts. They just didn't do anything. She had a you know quite a few title shots lost them all and it kind of gets to the point once you lose so many title shots it's kind of like okay you know uh, but i did think they were going to build her up as a baby face and she was one of my favorite knockouts in the division i was very excited uh when they signed her once upon a time i'd seen back when i was a little more like you know my order at eye pay-per-view here or there from the indies you know i'd seen her work uh, I'd seen her, I think she wrestled Tessa Blanchard one time on like a Twitch show or something for TNA. Uh, watched her work in Women of Wrestling. You know, so I was always a fan and I thought she was a good addition once they brought her on board. But, you know, we ex I think we expected with the departure of Scott Namor that she was probably going to be done with the company sooner than later. And I haven't heard of anything, you know, rather, uh, aside from her 
uh, from I know that she wanted to leave when Scott did. I don't. I haven't heard any her, you know, anything about her being unprofessional or anything like that. Um, the last match. I mean, I guess she's going to wrestle in the tapings here, but the last match we remember is this random Sasha Steele's match where they needed, you know, Santino decided they needed multiple referees, even though there was absolutely nothing at stake in the match. Uh, that's not how you want to go down with those kind of memories. But again, Giselle took a lot of losses in this company. There was uh, never never really a focused attempt to do anything with her is always it's always like we're gonna build her up just enough to challenge for the title and lose you know um i thought the chantourage with uh, jay vidal and savannah evans i thought that was entertaining i thought it worked but um she's gone she is now done and this knockout division is just ever shrinking uh we're in, we're in the worst place that this division has ever been I'm not even going to say one of the worst places. This is the worst place that the division has ever been. Um, I pretty, I feel pretty confident in saying that. But with that being said, uh, there, there's finally a little bit of help on the way. It looks like they're uh, bringing in Heather Reckless. Uh, it sounds like she worked the tapings, and she's she's very good. Uh, she's been around for a little bit. I saw her wrestle in Chicago. A couple times they have brought her on to do jobs on impact i think they might have had her wrestle jody threat uh and i remember saying that i had more interest in heather reckless than than uh, jody threat in the match but uh she i i know she's at least done impact once she she might have done it multiple times when they when they ran the loop through chicago but she's very good i think she'll be a pretty excellent addition if if that is the case, if they really are keeping her on, and that you know it, it's a good thing <laughs> that you're bringing people on because I talk all the time about all the knockouts that we have lost. Um, I act like they've passed away; they haven't passed away. But the you know ones who have departed for one reason or another have gotten hurt, uh, and then we've got like I said, we've got two or three on the website that they do not even use. So we don't even know really who's part of this division, but um, it's been a really, really rough year. Uh, the company clearly felt that just citing Zia Brookside and Ash by Elegance was all they needed to do for the year. And here we are, and we're, we're rapidly approaching Bound for Glory season, which is when they typically punch out, and we're still waiting. We're still waiting for them to do something to grow this division. Hasn't been the case and you know some of the news that came out about another knockout killer kelly is that she is expecting and the first thing i had to do was laugh and not not at her expecting but <laughs> you remember i got on the podcast and i said i think killer kelly's done with the company uh because i was told that uh what when i had checked on her you know when i sent a message is like hey what's going on with killer kelly I was kind of given this very broad, I'll let you know in person type of thing. So for me, I was thinking this was fresh off her losing the, the knockout tag team titles in about eight seconds. Of course, I'm exaggerating. Uh, but I was reading between the lines <laughs> in a very incorrect manner. I thought she was uh, had had heat with the company um, and, and or I thought perhaps she was hurt. I didn't really know. A lot of people thought she was hurt. But I had assumed off my conversation that something went array and something went wrong, something, you know, where, where she was departing. That's that's really what I thought happened. So um, I was definitely very wrong in that assumption. Uh, but it looks like her and Myron Reed are expecting. And it kind of goes back to when she did drop the knock knockouts tag team titles. And I remember reviewing the match and I was like, Masha was doing all the work. And all of a sudden Kelly just gets rolled up by Spitfire out of nowhere. And they dropped the title and they had just won the titles too. So that's where most fans were like, well, perhaps she's hurt. And I had met Kelly maybe, maybe like two weeks after that. And I remember being kind of thrown off because she was just wearing this giant uh like zip up hoodie like she wasn't 
and not that you have to dress up for meet and greets, but she was she was wearing like a giant extra large fucking hoodie and just I was I just I just thought it was kind of odd. Um and perhaps she was I don't know how far she along she was at the time, but it kind of makes sense to me now that she was uh covering up. And you know, from a from a professional standpoint, I'm sure everyone is happy for her, but at the same time, I'm sure there's internal frustration because you've got someone who was a big part of the division. They were a champion and they were just kind of pulled from plans, you know, from, from an already shrinking division. She was, you know, they had to, they had to pull her. Now Masha has obviously been moving forward with uh, the tag team championships with Alicia Edwards, but I, I would imagine there's, there's gotta be a little internal frustration. I know in my job, if I get, I know this is different, but if I get, you know, activated to go to active duty, uh, there, you know, it completely throws off uh, the scheduling and the manning. And, you know, I know that they don't tell me, but I know they get upset when <laughs> that happens because that's just, that's just the nature of the beast. This is a company that comes off like they, they plan it, create a very far in advance because we see so few pivots in what they do. So uh, I would imagine there's, there, there might be a little bit of internal frustration, but I'm sure at the same time, also everyone's happy for her. You know, um, being a parent is a beautiful thing. I've got, uh, you know, four of my own. Two, two of mine are biological. One is uh, he is my ward that I've raised since he was two, um, and then I've got my stepdaughter. You know, but but um, you know, being a parent is a beautiful thing. Uh, I, I would imagine there's. Uh, their journey into parenthood wasn't planned, but uh, it it that's not always the case. Sometimes that is just what happens. So we wish Killer Kelly and Myron Reed well. Um, but it sounds like she's going to be out of commission here for, for a little bit. Uh, she's she has posted some photos. Uh, they did professional photos. Her and Myron Reed. She looks like she's got to be about six seven months along. So we'll see what they do with this knockouts division. If they can find some unpregnant women to come in and fill her role and uh, fill these spots that are missing.